or should I even say at last? He, he uploaded this real quick. We have how Diablo became more powerful than a demon lord. Daemon Lord, or actually people say that's like a translation error. Apparently it's like a demon peer. His true form and revenge tends to explain, but I wonder if this video is going to cover what happened last episode. I highly doubt he's going to talk about Diablo's power that he used last episode, but maybe that's a separate video. But hey, let's see what he has to say on this one. Diablo's power is something that's always been quite a mystery to us. We've only ever seen him fight that one time in season one, and that was just barely scratching the surface of what he's capable of. His existence is also one that's shrouded in a lot of mystery too, so to see both partial- Damn. We know Guy Crimson here. Is this Rain? I don't know. This looks like the, the blonde girl. Blanc, maybe? Diablo here. One of the- one over here. I'm not really sure who this one is. Shrouded in a lot the of mystery though, too, huh? so to see both partially explained in the last two episodes was quite the surprise I'm sure a lot of you want to know more about. Yes. A lot of words were thrown out with not- Demon Lord, Demon Lord, Demon Rangs, Despair Time, Arc Demon, Demon Lords of Presence, yes, Haki Mao Haki, right? A lot of context, so here I am to explain what a Demon Lord is, how its potential surpasses Demon Lord that or of Demon a Demon Peer. Lord, and basically how Diablo evolved into one himself. I'll also cover everything the anime left out from all the scenes involving Diablo, so if you're curious about things like what he did to the clerk- Even the most recent episode! Okay, that is the most recent episode animation. Glad that he got this. Things like what he did to the clergy or what he was talking about with the demon hunter. Yeah. This video should have an explanation to all of that. But first- now, before I get into the rest of that, yeah. Romero's actually been reincarnated into an- AFK Journey, use your discount code at any news for your first 10 pull in AFK Journey or AFK Arena. And uh, back to the main content, uh, here we go. It's always fun to see Diablo's opponents slowly piece together just how powerful he is, and MVP, that's something by the way. we first see Damrata trying to figure out. Since the Five Elders gave him the order to kill Diablo, now, the five elders are obviously not all the luminaries, right? The luminaries are all dead. Well, not all dead. Seventh one was, you know, obviously Rotso Head, but the other dudes, I don't think they were luminaries at all, right? He was actively investigating what it was he was dealing with, and it was from that that he found Diablo wasn't just any regular demon. We saw him come to the conclusion that Diablo had bested Rosin, so that at the very least indicated he was an early modern archdemon. Early there was a modern. good chance that he was even... Early modern arc demon. Is it arch or arc? What is it? Arch or arc? Anyway, an early modern is 100 to 400 years old. That's pretty old, but you know, they age differently. Demon. There was a good chance that he was even older than that, though, since the older a demon was, the more powerful they were. And they have to like, oh, don't, don't, they have to be like 2,000 years of qualifications on a complete, like, battling for 2,000 years and never lose. And he's like, easy. To give a bit more context on what these Oh, here they are. Mean, modern archdemons were calamity class threats typically between two and 300 years old, while medieval demons were closer to that 1,000 year milestone. Oh, so these dudes are the Walpurgis. I thought these are random, like, NPC characters that didn't matter. But these dudes were all really fucking OP demons, huh? Closer to that 1,000 year milestone. Cool. They were demons powerful enough rain. to be There's assistants rain. to demon lords, and it was a completely different level of strength from that of the lower leveled demons. This made Damrata shudder at the thought, since a medieval archdemon was a threat to humanity entirely. No way. If a demon like that somehow made it into the world, then the destruction it could cause would be immense. That's why but the Eastern thank God that we have someone like that under control as such a nice butler for us. Empire places limitations on the demons they can summon and makes sure not to deal with anything beyond the medieval age. To do so would cost the summoner Old. their soul and their essence would be consumed in exchange for that demon. That being the case, the Empire's records only had successful summons for demons up to the medieval age, and anything beyond that was just unknown. Yeah, can't be summoning, now, I know. I know these- That's crazy, that, you, that soul is consumed. If you summon a demon, he just said how you pretty much sacrifice your soul. But Rimuru was like, oh, I'm so sleepy. Uh, shit, I'm gonna pass out. Yo, I'm just gonna summon these dudes. Oh, hey, hey Diablo, goodbye. Evil arch demons may sound like they're super powerful, but the only reason it seems like that is because it's coming from the perspective of Damrata. To scale things a bit more objectively, a medieval arch demon is only about as powerful as Rosin. 
Okay. I know that's not very strong to us. Oh, is this what really Rosin looks like in the... Okay. Well, it, it, Rosin has many different forms, but is this the OG Rosin? I know that's not very strong to us, but to the rest of humanity, he's an absolute... No, 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 no. This is Falmuth Rosin. The art, the manga art style was a bit different and has more lines. Falmuth Rosin... Yeah, this is Falmuth Rosin, right? Rosin. I know that's not very strong to us, but to the rest of humanity, he's an absolute legend. So, for a demon to subjugate him and make Rosin his subordinate, well, that would suggest whatever it was was Gotta even be more higher. powerful Gotta than be a higher. mythical archdemon. This was all information that came from the Eastern Empire's extensive research of demons, and the reason for that was because they were forced to. By being close to a demon stronghold with lots of power, the Eastern Empire had dedicated a lot of time and resources learning how to adapt to that. Okay. They established a regiment trained demon specifically hunters. in the art of demon hunting, and their research allowed them to create all sorts of <laughs> anti-demon tactics. Well, maybe they would be very effective against, like, you know, lesser demons, but like... Yeah, they look like fucking fodder to Diablo, huh? I mean, it's a primordial, what do you expect, right? It's a named primordial, what do you expect? So, while an archdemon was only something you'd hear about in Legends in the West, in the East, it was an all-too-frequent occurrence, one they eventually had to categorize and create individual strategies for. This was why the demon hunters were so knowledgeable when it came to identifying Diablo, and it's actually quite endearing when they finally do. Yeah! Thank you, though. Thank you so much for the hype building, because without these dudes glazing the fuck out of Diablo, there would, it wouldn't have been as hype. We need someone to understand why. Diablo is so hyped so that other people can be like, <gasps> Masaka! The process getting there was just so entertaining though, so let's start off with when they have him surrounded. Their initial thoughts were that this was just an archdemon, so as all archdemons were, they believed Diablo's weakness was in his physical Longa form. Diablo. Yes, a named archdemon is significantly stronger than a regular archdemon, but even so, its physical body was still the avenue to defeating it. Where the leader knew to exercise caution was with regards to the potential that he was dealing with an ancient demon. Initially, he believed Diablo was just medieval, but mm -hmm. after seeing he had higher, a name, he figured higher. it was best to consider him ancient. This was a class of demon older than medieval, and it was one most commonly associated with demon nobility. A higher order of demon gifted with power, intelligence, and possibly even an army. Really? They were a significant threat that the leader knew not to. Diablo did have a bunch of friends that he came with when he got summoned, right? They're still hanging out in the netherworld? To underestimate. Army? That's not to say he didn't think he could still defeat Diablo, though, since despite the possibility of him being ancient, he was in his eyes still just an archdemon. He was an opponent the demon hunter leader had tons of experience fighting against. There was, however, one thing that the hunter found strange, and that was the way Diablo's confidence surpassed that of every demon he's faced before. Mm -hmm. Sure, it was standard to see demons overestimate their power, but to see it at a level like this was just off-putting. This is not even being cocky, this is utmost confidence, because he is him, bro. His lack of concern for their attack couldn't even be called arrogance anymore. No. At this point, it was something even more imperious than- How can you be arrogant to ants when you are just like stomping on them like a fucking elephant? It's not even fair. That. So, the attack they engaged with was the latest in anti-demon technology, and its purpose was to break past the layers of barriers demons typically protected themselves Okay, with. so this it attack- used to force non- This attack actually was super customized to defeat demons, but it's like- Nothing. It doesn't do shit. ...reliant on magicules, and that normally would have been enough to take on the demons they usually faced. Diablo wasn't a normal demon though, so as we saw, his innate resistance meant he didn't even need a barrier to counter it. It was the second sign so far that Diablo was different. The third came when he named the skill he used to terrify everyone, because this was something only a demon lord class monster- Mao Haki, Lord's Ambition. ...could possess. Bringing us to that conversation about demon lord factors and demon evolution. This may have been a bit confusing in the anime, but it was essentially Diablo educating this person on how demon society really worked. So, the first bit of confusion comes from the hunter's limited knowledge on archdemons. He believed archdemon was the highest level of demon, nope. and because of that, it wasn't possible for them to become a demon lord. It Every time, it's so funny about how they approach Diablo, even in the season 1 finale, they were just so sure that the Arts Demon is like the top, but it's like, you have no 
fucking clue, buddy. Was a supposed fact uncovered by their extensive research on demons, and what that revealed was that every demon had an upper limit to the amount of magic kills they could store. Apparently, it was a fixed number across all of them, so though a demon may appear different in both form and strength, that difference stemmed from how much experience they had, okay. not the amount of magic kills. This is why older demons seem more, more powerful than modern older. ones, since over time they'd been able to formulate better strategies in conserving magic kills. They had optimized the ways in which they could use them and found the most efficient methods of getting the most out of them. It was this knowledge that made demon hunters not fearful of demons anymore, since by knowing their limits, they could use that against them. Medium. To them, knowledge was what gave them their advantage. Now, the hunter was right in stating a demon's magic kills were limited, but as Diablo said, to think they couldn't evolve past that was wrong too. Rouge was the living example of such a case, but it can demon's happen to demon any demon so long as they max their strength and lived for 2,000 years. That's it? I thought it's you have to be you never lose in this infinite battle. It's not infinite, but like like constantly fighting, constantly battling, and then in two thousand years you then achieve Daemon Lord, Demon Peer status. It was light work for someone as strong as Diablo, but not so much when you're any of the other demons. Wah -wah. Since demons naturally enjoyed combat, regardless of whether they were summoned to the physical realm or stayed in the spiritual one. Battle was sure to be a constant part of either. The spiritual realm was particularly unforgiving though, since to lose a fight there meant getting magic kills reduced from your upper limit. That's what he was talking about too, mana cap, right? Something like that. So, spiritual world is basically the netherworld or somewhere else where all the demons exist. Now, demons, they're not just born primordial, right? There's, it, it come, they, they all, so was Diablo born different from everyone else? Or are, are they, they're not born primordial, it's just like, you get born and you fight and you gain experience and you age longer. Is that how it works? Like, longer you live, the more experience you kill. But it sounds like, you're kind of just born, I don't know, it's a title. You're not just like, oh shit, he got born as a primordial. Some demons probably are born with innate talents and stuff. I don't know. It would devolve you from the state that you were trying to stay in and reset any progress you've made towards trying to ascend past Archdemon. I know the primordials are original and every other demon like ascends, descends beneath them, right? How does that work though? How do you become a primordial? Are you born a primordial or not? Is, is it a title or not? You guys are selling me all, all different shit. Are they just born random demons? Then they fucking battle for 2000 years, stockpile strength? That's to become demon lord, daemon lord, demon peer. What the fuck is a primordial? You were already a primordial then. It's just, you're just born as it. You're just born as it. That's the answer I needed. Come on, guys. What the fuck are you guys doing? You motherfucker just baiting me with different fucking answers. You born as a primordial. So, though Diablo made his evolution sound easy, what it really entailed was reaching your max potential first, then maintaining it for 2,000 years without losing once. Yeah. It was kind of like getting the number one Never headband lose. in Afro Samurai, then defending it for two straight- That sounds like a fucking spoiler for Afro Samurai that I've never seen, thank you. Two straight millennia without ever losing. This was the knowledge the Demon Hunter was missing, and though the revelation was certainly surprising, what shocked him more was Diablo's casual reference to Gi. Rouge, Blanc. Demon society had a very strict hierarchical relationship. You can never mention their names like that unless you are on that level. So, for a lower demon to refer to a higher one without any term of respect, well, that was as unthinkable as the end of the world. The demons are honestly quite well mannered. Their culture. I don't know, there's a level of respect and etiquette that they all have. I thought. They'd be savages, but nah. It didn't matter whether you were a primal or archdemon, the hierarchy of demon society was one that needed to be abided Very by. organized. Diablo would then refer to Blanc the same way, and the incident they were talking about was one Bloody which could sure. have plunged the world into chaos. That's right, when they were talking about Blanc, there was some scarlet something, bloody shore, ocean, I don't know, it sounds like she drained the fucking ocean with blood or some shit. So, if Diablo knew about that and was referring to Rouge and Blanc so casually, then that meant he had to be at least as powerful. Demons operate on a rigid hierarchy. A younger demon absolutely cannot refer to Prima without his title. Such a thing only permissible with the king's permission, or if the two were equals, the king's permission. So there is a demon king then, right? If there's all these nobilities and shit, 
there must be a demon king that exists at the top of the food chain in demon society. Am I correct? Hmm? Powerful as the one who caused the Bloody Shore incident. It was a fearsome thought that finally let the hunter peer into what it was he was dealing with. Okay. Now, Sade still hadn't come to that realization yet, so... Primordials are just the kings that are you colors. So the king in that context are each primordials. Got it. So there is no great king that reigns over all the primordials. They are already at the top of their game. They are the kings. Got it. So to him, Diablo wasn't anything particularly special. His name wasn't mentioned in any of the ancient texts, so at the very least, it meant he wasn't a great demon. That being the case, the- I feel like the name- but the name Diablo was not mentioned in ancient texts. I just feel like names like Diablo, Mephisto, Lucifer. These are ridiculous, popular demon names that anyone should know. But it's, it's, it's us with the, the different cultures and media. Like, straight up, you say Diablo, which is like the OG fucking devil or something. And she's like, oh, I've never heard of that shit. You made that shit up. The only thing Sade felt he needed to worry about was the unlikely case in which Diablo was an unnamed primordial demon. Since he knew Named very primordial. little of demons in general though, this wasn't a scenario in which Sade would give more than a second thought to. He would simply bolster his confidence with the help of- Diablo looks so much younger and more childlike in the manga. Cause in the anime he looks like a grown butler, here he looks like a teenager kinda. ...of his ignorance. I mean, he was after all strong enough to fight a demon lord. Specifically Valentine since apparently he'd almost defeated him. Wow. This made Diablo's arrogance all the more annoying since a supposed archdemon like him was nowhere close to the level of a demon lord. That's when Diablo would reveal he was actually a demon peer instead <gasps> and this would go to change pretty much everything. In the anime it's said- And then Glenda? Get in the you! Then translated as demon lord but to prevent confusion we'll keep calling him a demon peer. So. As a level of demon thought to only exist in legend, unofficially a demon peer was classified as a disaster level threat, an entity with enough force to rival entire countries. They were said to have power far exceeding anything else in the demon family, and not even a higher spirit could come close to how strong they were. Okay, Ramaris not even close. Okay. In fact, if anyone was to ever hope to have a chance to defeat one, at the very least, multiple elemental lord class creatures were needed. Multiple Demon elemental peers were lord so class. incredible. Have we seen an elemental lord class creature before? Have we? The Storm Dragon Veldra count as one? I don't know. That's probably a ridiculous comparison. Veldra could definitely beat Del Diablo, right? But like, multiple element lord class. Lord class is on par with Demon Lord. Have we seen any of those guys? I don't think so. It doesn't really come to the top of my head. Probably far and few between though that if not for the few vintage tomes dictating their occasional interference in the world, then no one would have even known they existed. So this was the evolution Diablo was referring to and it completely erased whatever limits were supposed to be imposed on him. His magical count was now at the point which couldn't even be fathomed anymore. That's great. It was as soon as the demon hunter heard that this was the case that- That's why he probably loves Rimuru so much. All the previous restraints and stuff, gone. Diablo is just prime form. He would immediately pass out, not from fear, but instead relief. Have- What? He passed out from relief? I thought he was so scared. What? The case that he would immediately pass out, not from fear, but instead relief. Did he fucking nut? Did he relieve himself? What do you fucking mean? Having known he was mere seconds away from fighting a demon peer, the joy he felt knowing he'd avoided that literally knocked him unconscious. Oh! He respects the game that much. Damn, that puts even better context than this demon hunter. He was overjoyed. Oh my god, such a being because they're demon hunters and they gotta study all this shit and counter the demons and now knowing some something even beyond that scale and it's like, oh my god, this is so cool that he passed out. It was after this that Sade would reluctantly try and fight Diablo on his own, but no matter how skilled he thought he was before, the fight itself was to say the least humiliating. Yeah, Sade's get specialty out of here. was to copy arts and make them 
all-rounder unique skill allow you to fully understand and acquire important art after seeing it once. Not an important skill. This is not like plunderer or like Billsy, but it's like a specifically art, which is something humans use, right? And fight Diablo on his own, but no matter how skilled he thought he was before, the fight itself was to say the least humiliating. Sade's specialty was to copy arts and make them his own, so his arsenal consisted of some of the trickiest and most complex magic and arts combinations out there. He was a very versatile fighter and one of the strongest humans on the planet, yet his go-to move amounted to nothing. Normally, he'd imbue his sword with whatever element his foe was weakest to, but Doesn't by the matter. time his magic was even deployed, Diablo would have already analyzed its structure and disassembled it. Right, he did something like, uh, by the time it reached him, he like removed all the properties, then it hit him with it's like a pretty like, empty blade or something, right? Effectively removing Sade's ability to bend the laws of nature and use it to his advantage. Crazy, that's some Uriel shit. This to fight with arts alone, but with his only advantage being in tactical skill, the difference in strength and magic made it seem like Diablo was fighting a baby. Like, he wasn't trying because he didn't need to, and Taking whatever gap there was in tactical experience, Diablo was quickly closing through careful analysis. He was displaying a level of growth that was genuinely terrifying. Fast forward now to after the clergy had made their appearance, and Diablo would tank their attack like it was nothing. Despite it being- He just- I thought he used some kind of skill to destroy it as an attack, but he just sat there, he's like, BOP, alright, tanked. Being ultimate class magic part of the nuclear family, this nuclear flame did absolutely nuclear nothing to him. family. That's when the clergy would switch over to holy magic, and what they would attempt to unleash was their special finisher called Trinity Break. Ryoiki Tenkai. And then domain expansion fucking origami fold. The most powerful spell to ever exist within holy magic. Okay. Its disintegrative light reduced anything and anyone down to its comp. So Trinity Break is better than Trinity Disintegrate. Break better and disintegrate. Confirmed? As it sells, so no matter how strong you were as a monster or magic born, even demon lords would find this attack impossible to resist against. Diablo once again couldn't be- Unless you have Uriel, ultimate guard, but go off. Be concerned in the slightest though, since the moment the three would try to cast it, a simple snap of his fingers was all it <laughs> took to negate it. It wasn't the act of snapping which had cancelled it out though, but instead the casting of an art known as Despair Time. It's an art! This was an ability Diablo created all on his own, and it used his Tempter unique skill in a way we haven't Bro yet seen made before. it? In addition to the manipulation and control we've seen him use it for in the past, Tempter also came with the subskill Temptation World. Originally, it allowed him to affect the target's subconscious and mental state, but Diablo had improved upon it to do so much more. Now it materialized a virtual world of which he had absolutely An actual over, domain. The victims within would be powerless to do anything but succumb. It's like a reality marble he can just, you know, summon them to, and they're just done. It's a one-shot KO, and no one can fucking survive this? How does that work? To it. Since the rules were determined entirely by him, he could even go so far as to dictate who could live and who could die with <laughs> it. Takamiya Mio. Literally, I'm just like, this is my domain. I create the rules. You're done. Goodbye. What makes this skill even more OP than that, though, is the way he combines it with reality exchange to make it real. You see, since the world is at first nothing but virtual, reality exchange allows him to take that pretend one and swap it out for the real thing. Okay. That means any monster or creature he imagined within would, after reality exchange, take physical form and become real in the physical world. What? It was a crazy, unfair skill that could be used for all sorts of inhumane. I need to. He creates shit. He, he created them with this domain. He literally can just manipulate the laws in this domain and now he's just creating shit. He created these two. This is true? Yeah? ...them to take that pretend one and swap it out for the real thing. That means any monster or creature he imagined within would, after reality exchange, take physical form and become real in the physical world. What? He can just create shit. Imagine, he imagines the fucking, he just imagines, this is an example, I guess, he didn't create these demons, but the actual things he's saying, you can just create shit with reality exchange after domain expansion. It was a crazy, unfair skill that could be used for all sorts of inhumane things. Despair Time was therefore a combination of Temptation World and Reality Exchange, which, as we saw, trapped the clergy in a world of Diablo's own creation. I imagine he made magic ineffective in it, made it real, then collapsed that separate plane on top of itself. 
The collapsing part being a separate art he refers to as End of World. End it was the act world. of destroying his newly formed reality and turning it back into nothingness. Now, as OP as making a complete separate plane of existence is, breaking out was technically possible. Oh? Should the victim have a well-trained spiritual body, or even just incredibly refined willpower, they could theoretically break themselves out. Sounds like a genjutsu. Like if you have enough willpower, if you can like resist him, then you can break out, but who could really do that? Doing so meant overpowering Diablo though, so it was very unlikely that anyone could ever do Nimuru it. probably could, but like but who, yeah, you know. That was everything we no got casual pertaining could. to Diablo these past two episodes. I hope you enjoyed learning more about him, and if you did, then consider I did. Please go like his videos and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. The craziest shit here was the reality exchange part. I, when we all saw, you know, you know, fucking death timer or something, right? I, 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 I didn't, all I saw was him just do whatever the fuck he wanted in that domain. But the fact that he can also create shit with his imagination, that's something we haven't seen yet. He could just make monsters and shit, right? He could just do whatever the fuck he wants. What an insane power. But yeah, that's, that's Diablo in a nutshell. And I'm sure he still hasn't, you know, explained. I'm sure he hasn't shown us everything he can do. And I want to kind of know more about, like, Diablo's weapon itself. Like, he has, like, long claws and, you know, different thing and why he uses those. But demon stuff, I think this is one of the most interesting topics. Specifically, primordial demons. So, dub video and news. Thank you.